Good afternoon or morning, whichever it is for you. Carla, that was for you so that you can get a good afternoon because um, I know not all of you are in my class in the morning. Um, okay, so today's lesson is on 3D figures and we are finally starting our three-dimensional part of our unit. So in this little lesson, you're going to learn to draw more like practice, how it, practicing how to draw and identifying the different parts of 3D figures. So let's get started. Um, I will say that today we're going to deal with the the like square-ish, um, rectangular, and the polygon shapes. We're not going to deal with the circles yet. We'll deal with those in our next lesson. But um, most of the rules for both are, are similar. So um, a lot of this will be stuff that you can carry on into the next part of our lesson. So 3D figures have three dimensions. They're going to have a length and a width, which, you know, any 2D object does. But then it's also going to have that height that we're adding to it. So there's three different dimensions that we're going to be measuring. So a flat surface of a 3D figure is going to be called one of its faces or a face. And I can show examples in a minute, but that's a face. And then an edge is going to be where two of these faces meet. We're going to call a vertex is going to be where the figure comes to a point. And finally, the base is going to be what we use. It's going to be actually one of the faces, but the base is what we're going to use to name or shape or, I'm sorry, classify the figure. So like a rectangular pyramid would have a rectangle bottom. Triangular pyramid would have a triangle base or bottom. So let's get started with just prisms to start with. Okay, so with a prism, we're going to have two bases. Um, so right here is a base for this first example, this rectangular prism. But then I've also got an identical base down here at the bottom. So this, these are rectangles, so this is called a rectangular prism. And then if you look at the one next to it, we've got a hexagon base up here at the top. And then a hexagon base down here at the bottom. So these are hexagons, so we call this a hexagonal prism. Um, prism meaning that it has two bases and that they're going to be um, parallelograms. And then another shape that we're going to be looking at and learning about are pyramids. And pyramids are similar, but they only have one base. So now instead of having two bases, they just have one. And at the opposite end, instead of having that opposite base, they're going to have a vertex. So one base, and then they're going to have a vertex. And it doesn't really have a, oops, it doesn't really have a point for that. But these are both um, vertex. So on this triangular pyramid, you'll notice that the base is a triangle. So you can see right here, right here, right here. So that's where we get the triangular pyramid from. And then for the square pyramid, you'll look at the opposite end of the vertex, opposite the vertex to see that we have a square. So this is a square pyramid. Of course, the base um, is a square, it's where they get their name. And then the other thing to note about pyramids is that their remaining faces are gonna be triangles. So this one is a triangle, this one is a triangle. The one in the back would be a triangle. Um, this one in the back is a triangle. This one up front's a triangle. This one's a triangle. There's another one on the other side. But all of those faces that are remaining are going to be triangles when we have a pyramid. So let's do this one together. We are going to start by doing examples where we classify each 3D figure. And the way that we're going to do that is kind of think about some of the different attributes. So first we want to think about the base of this figure. So our base is down here. I'm going to outline it. That's one, two, three, four, five sides. So um, that will help us in a little bit. But one thing I want you to notice is how many bases there are. And you'll notice that for this example, there's only one base. So there's one base and that base's shape is a pentagon. Five is pent, P-E-N-T-A-G-O-N, pentagon. And then you want to look at how many faces there are. There are, let's see, one, two, three, 
4 and 5. So there are five faces and the shape of those faces was triangular. So triangle or triangular faces. So because we have one base and the base is a pentagon and because we have triangles for faces, the name of our figure is going to be a pentagonal or pentagon pyramid. The next figure is um, right here. We've got a base at the top, and I didn't trace that very well. But there's a base, and then we also have a base down here. So there's two bases. Um, so there are two bases, and the shape of them is circular. So two circular, two circle bases. And they are both... Okay, I messed up. So two parallel bases, and they're both shaped like circles. So I needed to fix this. Both shaped like circles. Um, and then the bases are going to be connected by a curved surface. Curved surface. So because we have two bases that are circles with a curved surface, this is going to be called a cylinder. One more we do before I have you do a couple on your own. Um, let's take a look at this one. We've got to find the two bases. There's no point on this one. So there's obviously um, going to be two bases. And they are both um, the ones that are parallel to each other. So these. And there's one back here in the back. And those are um, six sides. So they're both hexagons. And then we need to count the sides, the faces. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. One for each side of your base. And they are all shaped like rectangles. So this figure is going to be a hexagonal. Again, taking that word hexagon. Hexagonal. And then because we have rectangles for sides, it's going to be a prism. Okay, now I'd like you to try two on your own. You're going to try this one. Um, count the bases, figure out what shape they are, and then look at the faces, decide if they're triangular or if they are rectangular, and come up with a name for this figure. And then also for this one, be sure to count the number of sides. This one might be a little bit tricky if you're not sure what all the different polygon names are. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is draw these figures um, by thinking about the front, top, and side view. So if we were to take this three-dimensional figure and just look at it from the front, which would mean only looking at this side, um, Wow. We just want to draw like a two-dimensional view of what this would look like. So that is what it would look like from the front. Um, next we're going to look at it from the top point of view. So if we were looking directly down on top of this figure, we would just be seeing, although these are at different heights, we would see each of the sections. So it's just going to look like that if we look at it from the top. Finally, we want to think about what it's going to look like if we just looked at it from the side point of view. You can see I've highlighted it. So we, again, won't be able to tell that, that there's depth to it, but we'll just see, um, you know, each of these sides that will be represented like, one, two, three. You could think of it from that side, or if you're looking at it from this side, that might be another way to think of it. So from the front and side views, there appears to be one cube in the top level, in the top left corner, and then the front view sh shows two cubes in the middle layer, and the top view shows the bottom layer has three cubes. So um, taking all three of those pieces and putting them together, and there's kind of like a verbal, wordy description of it. So now I want you to try it. I want you to take this picture 
and I want you to attempt to show me a front, a top, and a side view. So all three of those. And I can check your answer for you. Okay, so let's do another I do or we do together. So we are going to draw the front, top, and side view of this figure. So the front of this is just looking at it straight on from the front in a flat way of, of thinking of it. So the first thing that we have is that it's like two layers. And then over here we've got three levels. So that would be the front view of our figure with three squares on the bottom, two on top of the right side and one square on top of the left side. Next, let's look, let's look at it from the top. So just looking straight down, you'll notice that although there's different levels and depths to this, the top's still just going to have that three straight across. So the figure looks like a row of three squares. And finally, just looking at this from the side view, you'll notice that you're just going to have three blocks stacked on top of each other. So there you have our three different versions. Now I would like for you to try one, one more just like this. So you're going to do the front, the top, and the side view. We're almost done. Um, personally, I feel like this is the hardest question in the whole lesson. So we are going to attempt to draw this figure um, given the front, the top, and the side view. So I know that from the front, I've got like what looks like a base of, and this is where your 3D drawing skills may come in handy. Um, and I am going to attempt to try and do a good job with this, but I can't make any guarantees. So like I said, I'm not the greatest at this, but I am definitely making an effort. So, so far it looks like to me like we've got this cube thing going on. So from the top looking down, I'm going to see the cube. And then from both sides, I see the cube. So obviously we've got the cube. But then we've got this funky like thing right here. So I know that from like the front side, um, I might have an extra block here. Or I might have an extra block here. But from the side view... I'm going to have it back here. So if I'm going to have it, it's going to have to end up being where those two meet, which is back there in the corner. And to me, that's just really odd. Um, but yeah, so let's try and draw that. So that one comes up. And that's my attempt at drawing that. But um, it's not perfect. Yeah, by any means, it's pretty rough, actually. But um, So it's really just playing with the different um, squares. And, you know, if we had some little cubes, I might be able to get those if it's going to help you because I feel like for some people these might be tough. But I could be wrong. Hopefully they're a breeze for most of you. Um, and then number two, draw the front and back view. So we want to draw the front view of this as if we were looking straight on. So looking straight on like this, all we would see, because we wouldn't be able to see the depth, we would just see this L shape, this backwards L shape, um, where we've got the three on the bottom and then the one up top on the right. And then to draw the back view, we would be looking at, I've attempted to shade it in, but obviously we can't see it from there because we need to think as if this um, whole figure were turned around. So if we were to turn it around, we basically would be seeing the same thing. We just wouldn't be able to see this cube right here. Um, but the view from the back would look just like this. So basically an exact opposite. So there is our front and back. So to finish off this assignment and get credit for it, um, go ahead and do the last two you do's where you're going to choose from these. Luckily, you don't have to draw it. You can just kind of take a look at the pictures. Um, but identify the figure that's shown by the top front and side view here, and then also number two, identify the front and back. And remember that you're going to be flipping it around um, to see kind of like the reverse. So see which one of those you think is correct, and make sure you get your five points for today.